Yo guys, welcome back to some World of Warships. Today we're taking a look at the new Aubon bundles, as well as a Cat Commander Warship Strike, but really we're here to talk about the new bundle chain here, specifically leading towards the Iwami. A tier 9 battleship that has a bit of a secondary focus, and I actually have enjoyed playing this thing, especially in tier 9 ranked, where you can make use of these pretty decent secondaries you can see here. They're actually Harugamo turrets, which is pretty strong. They have the improved accuracy of the Ohio and Massachusetts style Schlieffen, these kinds of things. Makes them pretty solid overall. You lack a little bit of armor, but you actually have some reasonably accurate guns and you actually get 20 kilometer torps as well, which are gonna do some pretty decent damage thanks to being high tier Japanese torpedoes. Now we'll get into some gameplay in a little bit. I'll show you what the Awami is actually like in some battles if you are interested in getting this ship. But we gotta discuss the festival here first and the monetization method because the final bundle is still 10,000 doubloons, which is quite a lot considering the Awami is still available for 19,300 doubloons, I believe. Yes, 19,300 doubloons for the Awami, also available in the premium shop. So whatever we're doing to get this 9,000 doubloon discount has to be pretty good. Um, 10,000 doubloons is still quite a lot. You can get yourself a lot of tier seven premiums. You're also gonna see not battleships, but you're going to see some cruisers dipping close to that range at tier eight even. So you better have some decent stuff in these bundles or make the rest of those bundles available for free if you grind out those uh, combat missions, that kind of thing. But if we come over here into the news section, we can see how many of these tokens we can actually earn for free without spending real money on them. First up, we're gonna have two bundles for five tokens each, and that's gonna use up some free XP. The other bundles here are going to be doubloons, so we're gonna ignore those for now, since typically that's gonna cost you real world money. Next up, we have tokens for missions here, which means you have to complete these combat missions to actually gain these tokens. Whether or not that's going to be easy, we'll have to take a look at in a little bit here, but that's another 45 tokens here. And the last way to gain some tokens without spending real world money is to use some of these purchasable missions. And interestingly, they've got a pretty strict time limit on this one. This first one here, you only have three days to get it, which means you're actually probably too late by the time this video comes out. I'm recording this on Friday. This will definitely be going out on Monday if all things go according to plan. Uh, so sorry about that. Um, so you missed out on five already. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, I'm sorry. Just the way these missions are done, uh, oh boy. And then generous, op <laughs> generous offerings, five tokens. That is a hilarious name. And then the last one here, also five tokens. So if my math is right, we're gonna be getting 10 tokens from free XP, add to 45 for this main mission, giving us 55 tokens there. Then we're gonna get five eat from each of these three, which gives us 70 tokens total without spending real world money. That will cost you some coal here, as well as some free XP, and a lot of time to grind through these mission chains since there are five of them and 15 of those tokens are locked behind that final reward. So then, how many of these bundles can we get for our 70 available tokens? Well, five here, spend another 15, that gets us up to 20. Spend another 20, gets us to 40 total used, plus another 30 here means this is the last bundle we're gonna get. We are only halfway there and they are Increasing by a lot in the cost here. The next one is gonna be 40. So these you're gonna to have to purchase yourself for doubloons, it looks like. Next set is 50, also going to be purchasable for doubloons only. Can't grind out any more tokens, of course, once you've had those 70. And then another 60 here in this final one. And then you have the privilege of spending 10,000 doubloons. Now, assuming I haven't messed up all the math here, which is entirely possible, but we have 220 tokens total required to get this seventh bundle and then have the option of spending 10,000 doubloons on the Awami. So if we use our 70 tokens to get ourselves up to this bundle here, well, we're gonna have to spend another 150 tokens to get ourselves towards the Awami. 
And since they only come in 20 token packs, that means we actually have to buy 160 of them, assuming we got all of these missions. Although for you guys, maybe that's okay, because <laughs> like I said, by this point, you've probably missed out on that mission if you're seeing this video and haven't in yet invested in this uh, event yet. Uh, so eight of these bundles is going to be required here to actually have the option of purchasing the Awami, which means we're spending 8,000 doubloons on these tokens and then another 10,000 doubloons on the Awami, when the Awami is just available over here for 19,300 doubloons, and we have to do a bunch of grinding to go along with it. Um, not sure about that being much of a discount. Now to play devil's advocate here a little bit for Wargaming, they are giving you a bunch of loot boxes alongside this discounted Awami, and you're getting yourself an eight point commander and a, sp a special patch. I'm not sure why they're advertising these camos as a good reward alongside things. These used to be really strong ones. This one gave you 777% free XP. This one was commander XP? No, this one, one of them was an insane amount of commander XP. One of them was insane amount of base XP and then credits as well. They used to be awesome camos, but ever since the economy rework, they're purely cosmetic, so they're worthless. <laughs> uh, so really, it is just one loot box, one patch, and a loot box, an eight-point commander, and a two loot boxes, uh, two loot boxes, three loot boxes here. So yeah, a few loot boxes, basic coal containers or resources containers, and then you get yourself an awami. So. The argument would be, I suppose, all of this extra stuff here is the discount you're getting alongside 1,300 doubloons off an Awami. I would argue that is not worth it at all. And you can see, even if you do complete all of this and spend all of those doubloons, you get yourself 9,700 doubloons back. So if you want some of this stuff and you already have an Awami, I suppose you'll get refunded for those doubloons you spent. But it's still really expensive. And honestly, 9,700 probably isn't enough to cover. Oh my goodness, I can't... You guys probably realized this as I was talking. <laughs> you, you, when you purchase a WAMI for 10,000 doubloons in this bundle, you will receive 9,700 back. <laughs> so if you already have a WAMI, you can spend 10,000 doubloons to gain 9,700 back. <laughs> Yeah, this is a pretty wild bundle chain here. Uh, the monetization here is pretty extreme. At least this time, we do actually have the option to buy the Awami outright. Uh, oftentimes we see this with things like Brisbane, for example, or a lot of these premium ships in mission chains or in these web events that the ship is only available through those heavily monetized events. And then we're promised that the ship will come out in a little bit or later and they still haven't shown up yet. It's unfortunate, but at least with this one, you can purchase the Awami outright if you are interested in it. And I would suggest you do so. Uh, this, this bundle chain looks just abysmal as far as value is concerned. And really quick before we do finally get into actually playing the ship and talking about the ship and not just the event. If you are considering buying this thing for 19,300 doubloons or whatever it is in the premium shop in your currency, keep in mind we are getting closer to Black Friday. That's usually the best time to be spending money in this game, at least if you want some of these higher tier premium ships. I know the Iwami specifically doesn't have a Black Friday version, but there are plenty of ships that are getting that Black Friday version and are going to be at a pretty decent discount. Uh, the Kearsarge B for one, I think was 16,000 doubloons, I believe, instead of the 19,000 doubloons, a reasonable discount. And other ships like the Jambart B also got one of those discounts. And Jambart, of course, isn't available anymore for normal purchase at any time of the year, but this Black Friday version still does exist. So I would suggest waiting for that even if you can. Um, but otherwise, if you do want the Awami right away, don't go for these bundles, man. It's just, it's so bad. 
So finally, with all of that out of the way, what is this ship? It is a tier 9 Japanese battleship. Decent deck armor, which is nice to see, but a lot of 32mm plating. The belt armor is not all that great, and you kind of have this weird turtleback-y thing to protect your citadel, but it's typically not enough. You can see the angle here isn't very steep. Uh, let's just go quickly over to a curve first so I can show you what I mean here. Curve first angle is much steeper here, meaning that the shells come in and they bounce up. And that's what you're looking for out of a turtleback, at least one that's going to be protecting your citadel and not just allowing the shells to go through. Where this one, typically gonna let the shells go through. It is some spaced armor, I suppose, at the end of the day, but that is definitely an above water citadel you gotta worry about. So if you're gonna be brawling in this ship, which you might wanna do considering the range, DPM, and accuracy of these secondaries, you'd have to be quite careful. Fortunately, as we'll get into game, the rear turrets looking forward have a really good um, angle of fire, so that allows you to stay angled most of the time. The secondaries here, if you take IFHE, actually pen over 32 millimeters, which is pretty nice. Um, not taking a full secondary build here though, since we will be playing in random battles. If you find yourself in ranked or a tier nine brawl, anything like that, Full secondary build can do some work. Uh, I think I have a video of that on the channel back when we had some tier nine ranked if you want to look for that one. 20 kilometer torps, funny meme torps. They do a lot of damage, um, but they are spotted from the moon and they are at the very back of your ship. So not the best for drive-bys. Uh, typically people will catch your broadside before you actually are able to get those torps landed. So it'll hurt, but Decent zoning tool, I suppose. It's not terribly fast, but our concealment is pretty decent here. The build looks a little something like this. Bit of a hybrid build. I still like the secondaries, but it's unlikely we'll get to use them unless we are top tier. Tier 10 and especially super ship tier can be extremely rough for a tier 9 ship, especially one that wants to push in since that's not really the meta. We're going to be using main battery mod 3 for reload as well as aiming systems. Like I said, the secondaries are fun, especially in ranked and close quarters gameplay, but random battles we can't quite do that. So we're going to focus a little more on the main guns while trying to look for opportunities to push in. That's going to be the ship. Let's take it into a game and see how it plays. Well, I'm not sure who exactly rigged the matchmaker for us today, but I do appreciate it. <laughs> we find ourselves in... Oh, a tier 9 game where there's not even that many tier 9s. A lot of lower tier ships. There is a sub and a carrier to deal with, so that's not too amazing for us. But, well, not facing super ships is pretty nice in this thing. Notice here that the gun angles are just awesome. Um, you have to give this much broadside to actually fire all your guns. Uh, yeah, pretty decent angle. You're almost auto-bouncing stuff here at this at this point. Most of the time you actually probably are. So very nice to stay angled like that when we do lack a bit of armor here. The um, healing on this ship isn't fast cooldown like you might see on the Ohio, Georgia, that kind of thing. Um, despite having the improved secondaries. Let's see. Baltimore? Ooh, Azuma out here. Okay. That's really nice. We're going to use the island to push up to. Oh, I think I'm going to miss it. We'll see. Try there. Ah, he slowed down. Okay. Well, those are definitely going to land short. Slow down turnout means the aiming system doesn't like you too much. When you're shooting at some of these guys. 9k out of HE. Dang. Well, we're going to push to the island and try to uh, go dark here. Wow, looks like we splashed all around him again. So even though we're taking accuracy mod here, we do uh, see some of the issues with some of these ships that have a little more ability to brawl. Secondaries wise, at least. Typically, you do lack some of that main gun dispersion. It's okay, we're getting to the island here. It's not too bad. This guy's going to turn around and possibly go flat broadside. Uh, we need to deal with that. ASWs at least do have some range, which is, which is very handy. Uh, it's pretty miserable to be fighting against subs in an Ohio these days. Alright, we'll try again. 
Nice. A little bit of splash damage. We'll definitely take that. I don't want to be... Uh, oh, it's an okay salvo, I guess. I don't want to be bow in here to the sub. So we're actually going to go uh, like this into the island. Gonna turn broadside to us again. Greedy, huh? Still gonna be uh, looking for this submarine here. Chatter, huh? Unfortunate. Ship is on fire. Let's see. Maybe we can find a cruiser here. We should have a. Oh no, the Zuma went this way as well. It's kind of funny. There's a heal. Yeah, okay, sub is back. Let's make sure we help deal with him. Send those out that way. Hello! Why didn't- Oh my goodness, look at the dispersion! We still got a citadel. But oh my goodness, what was that? Hey, we got another citadel. And we got the sub. Let's go! Okay! Iwami doing things. Hopefully there's the Azuma here doesn't know to swap to AP, since we're broadside on. There we go, that's some better dispersion. There's the Torps. A little bit of secondary damage in. Not too insane, though. Try and finish this guy off first before we go after the Baltimore. Ah. Uh, bounce. Bounce over Ben. Nice. Okay, team got him. That's good. Let's avoid these torps. Torpedoes, dead ahead. Secondary is for the Benson. And then we focus Balti here, I think. Ooh, we just lost two of our DDs. That's not great. He's going to stay angled but we are able to overmatch him. Just like that. Benson's even opening up on us, okay, sure. Just let the secondaries take care of him. Use the next heal. Work secondaries. Sherberg is gonna go down here soon, so. We're actually going to turn around here in a sec. But we do want to help finish the Balti off first. And he goes dark. That's too bad. Uh, let's pretend he's here. Let's pretend he's there and then we'll turn around since we don't really want to be walking into an Azuma kiting from us. That's a lot of HE pressure. Ah, we missed. Worth a shot. We always have our rep here if he does manage to light a fire, which he does. But they, uh, they definitely can't spot us. There we go. Managed to go dark. Feels good. Send out some 20 kilometer torps. I'm also not using my rep until he gets his last salvo into us. Just want to guarantee we're not eating permafires. There we go. And now we'll make our way back down here to help out. Oh, our Bismarck came to this side. That's so funny. Do people not want to set up crossfires anymore? Hmm. I suppose I went too far to the flank maybe to set up a real crossfire. But it is kind of interesting. Okay, finally get some shots here on the Azuma. It's going to start kiting again, I think. Yeah, right away. <laughs> right away, guys! So that is... Uh, that's the high tier special. So if you're going to be... Playing this thing, it's going to be pretty rough when you get into more higher tiers. Here at least we got some lower tiers that played a little closer range for us, which is quite nice. But we're just going to let him be. I don't really see much point in shooting him or going after him very much. He's not really impacting the game is the thing. So we may as well try to deal with enemy ships that are closer to the objectives. Uh, we do have them triple capped right now, but... Should get C here. Mm, poor shot. We'll let that one more. See, like our Johan pulling out like this, he's gonna go down pretty quickly. 
so it's very easy for our team here to just overextend and die. You see that a lot. So this game is not far from over here. Despite what the announcer just said. <laughs> uh, we'll send out more 20s for this Azuma. Maybe we can hit some of those. Three bounces. That's pretty typical for an Azumo. Not a lot of superstructure on that thing when he's angled. It's pretty hard to do damage. The rune. Try and get over that island. Nice. Dispersion looks okay. Don't know if I let enough. I haven't used these guns in a long time. Our submarine's done. Did not lead enough. Or just lack dispersion a bit. Zemo's gonna burn up. NC's gonna turn out. Still not a great shot for us, but we'll try. He appears to be slowing down as well. Dispersion's just okay. Right, you only get eight guns here where Azumo, your tech tree counterpart at tier nine here, would be getting nine of them. I didn't check the dispersion, but I'm pretty sure it's a little better as well on the Azumo. Just because you do get these secondaries, they tend to make these ships a lot less accurate. Uh, was he slowing down? He was. Too bad. Wait, I wanted to check the torps. Our victory is in sight. Oh? No, okay, I don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> That'd be funny though. Alright, our Bismarck's going in alone. Runes reverse. See guys, it's It's uh it's a close one still. Direct front. Torpedoes to starboard. Okay, there's the DD. We'll never get a shot on that. It is just the Split radar, but we do want to be helping on that while we can. Still waiting for this rune. NC turning broadside. We'll try that. NC's got a pretty vulnerable citadel. No, he canceled his turn. I think we're low then. Yeah, too low. Went for the home run. We're still in a pretty good spot. This Azuma even turned out again, so there's no way he ever gets to the A cap at this point, really. So it's just up to us to hopefully have our Bismarck live and then try and finish off the rest of these guys here. DD even gets the enemy DD, which is very nice. Rune has turtle back. So we're trying to aim under the gun here. Sometimes that'll get you some citadels. And it does this time. Very nice. Kago gets some torps on us. It's okay. Team takes out the cruiser for us. Very good. So Wami's doing pretty good in this one, honestly. Not every game is going to look like this. Oh, is he going to turn broadside? Let's try and keep these guns as far on this side as we can. I think he will. Right? go around this island this way no he's not good oh the game's over I should have shot anyway whoops I <laughs> was not paying attention alrighty that's fine Awami's pretty good though um, typically random battles aren't gonna give you a match like this one did all right the damage wasn't too amazing but uh, the ship certainly performed and it's gonna be even more fun in things like ranked battles and brawls, that kind of thing. Anytime you can push in with tier 9, get these secondaries going, it is... It's a blast, honestly. And you can probably... I mean, I would switch Grease the Gears for IFHG then. If you're going to get a lot of uptime on these secondaries, that way they will pin 32 millimeters of armor, which, of course, is the big break point on mo most battleships, let's be honest. 32 millimeters is just everywhere. So if you're full penning that instead of shattering, your damage goes up massively. You can even run a full secondary build on this thing, and you get yourself out to 10 and a half kilometer range. Yeah, 10 and a half kilometer range, and if you even go for the full thing, uh, including sacrificing main gun reload, they're a two second reload before adrenaline rush. <laughs> so the DPM is pretty fun in this thing. It's uh, 
It's a weird one. It's a Japanese battleship, and yet it feels like it fits in a little better with the battlecruiser line on the German side of things, the Schlieffen line. Uh, so that's going to do it for today's video. Hope you enjoy. Let me know what you think of the Awami and this event in particular. And if I haven't said it clearly enough yet in this video, what do I think of this event? It seems like bait to me. It, it seems like, yes, we're going to give you a discount on the Awami. Don't think about it. Don't do the math. It's just going to be better, I promise. And then it really just isn't. So if you're looking for this ship, definitely just buy it outright. That will be always be my advice. And then, of course, maybe wait for Black Friday. You never know what new Black Friday ships they add. Typically, there is a new Tier 9 at times. We got the Kearsarge, the Jean Bart. Um, we also got the Alaska. A few others that are maybe Azuma? Azuma B? That makes sense. So there's a few. And... Uh, that discount is pretty nice, much better than the discount you're going to get in this bundle. So thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it and have a great rest of your day.